Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing one of the recent discoveries, or one of the recent mysterious discoveries, coming from our own moon. The discovery of something unexpected underneath the surface, and something that at the moment is not very easy to explain. But yeah, no, it's nothing to do with aliens or any kind of extraterrestrial mysteries, it's really more geological in nature. But coming from a very exciting region that most of us probably have never heard of before. And specifically, it seems to be some kind of a relatively dense, relatively hot structure, several hundred kilometers across, located in the region that you see right there on the surface of the moon. And so let's actually discuss exactly what this region is, why this region is so exciting for various reasons, but also talk a little bit more about what this means for our understanding of the evolution of the moon, but also about things that we actually cannot answer at all right now. Well, the first, I guess let's start with the obvious. Based on various surface structures on the moon, we know it's gone through some major volcanism in the past. For example, all of these darker patches you see, known as mare, they're essentially signs of ancient volcanism that used to be all over the surface. But this most likely stopped approximately three and a half billion years ago, with all of these ancient lava plains solidifying and never changing ever since. Except for, of course, occasional collision with an asteroid. A lot of this was studied and confirmed by retrieving various ancient rocks from the moon's surface during the Apollo missions, and all of the lunar rocks collected confirmed that the volcanism was most likely active 3 to 4 billion years ago. But that's in most locations, not all locations. More recent studies discovered that some volcanoes might have actually formed only 1 billion years ago, especially in the locations on the far side. And by studying the lunar surface in more detail and by essentially scanning it using a lot of different frequencies, which of course allow geologists to create these beautiful and extremely detailed surface maps of the moon. There's actually a video about this in the description. Eventually, the scientists discovered some areas, like this one right here, known as compton belkovich thorium anomaly, that seems to represent an unusual recent volcanic complex, once again on the far side of the moon, that's basically invisible to us from the surface of the planet. You can only study it by having some kind of a satellite that orbits the moon. And I guess more intriguingly, it was actually discovered by studying gamma rays. This location seems to be slightly more radioactive than a lot of other locations, especially on the far side. This unusual radioactivity is now believed to be produced by concentrated thorium. That same stuff that's responsible for radiation on our own planet, with both thorium and uranium found in large amounts on planet Earth as well. Intriguingly, the concentration of thorium here is something like a hundred times higher than the average amount on planet Earth. And just like on planet Earth, a large concentration of radioactive elements will often result in a slightly higher heat. And so in that recent study, the scientists wanted to actually find out how much hotter the location was and what's possibly happening on the inside. And for this, they used a lot of microwave studies to try to figure out the overall temperature. And strangely enough, previous studies have already established this location to be extremely reflective in certain frequencies as if there was something relatively dense and relatively solid on the inside. This location is approximately 32 by 18 kilometers in size, and geologically, and in terms of appearance, it resembles a volcanic complex. Although unlike a typical volcano on Earth, here because of lower gravity, but also because there's no atmosphere, the way that the lava flows would also be slightly different. And so intriguingly, even though most of the volcanoes on the Moon generally have a slope of less than 7 degrees, suggesting that the lava flows very fast, but also doesn't really produce very large mountains. In this location, the slope is 25 degrees, implying that the lava coming out of this volcano is a lot more viscous, extremely likely containing different composition as well. On top of this, there are even visible signs of remnants from an explosive event covering a relatively large area at least 300 kilometers away. In other words, when this volcano erupted, it seemed to have been pretty explosive and was actually very different from a lot of other volcanoes on the surface of the moon. But this time by using microwave frequencies, in order to scan the surface and trying to see what's underneath, a few kilometers deep, the scientists discovered that this area seems to be super bright in certain frequencies, suggesting that whatever this is, it's extremely hot, but not on the surface, only underneath, with all this extra heat very likely coming from huge deposits of thorium underneath, but more importantly, coming from other radioactive elements, most likely inside of what's known as granite, the type of a volcanic rock that's super common on our own planet, and that humans have used for construction for thousands of years, but also the type of rock that's extremely rare outside of our own planet. 
And intriguingly, this rock is almost always produced as a large chunk. It's always very hard, very tough. It also requires very special conditions in order to create these massive structures. Now, because it's so strong and because it's actually everywhere on the planet, that's why humans have used it for construction for as long as we basically build things. Granite is like a perfect rock to build anything. But there's one issue though. It does require very specific conditions, including a lot of liquid water and a lot of plate tectonics. As a matter of fact, it's usually formed as part of a multi-cycle process. Here the material has to be melted, recycled and melted again several times and usually in the presence of liquid water. So it's the remelting of basaltic rock or crystal fractionation that usually results in the production of granite. So obviously not a problem for planet Earth, where we had these conditions for billions of years, but finding signs of this on the moon is not as easy to explain. We have no plate tectonics here and there is obviously no liquid water. Although to be more exact, none of this is based on samples. It's all based on the readings from satellites that discovered that the heat here is at least 20 times higher than average and the most likely explanation are the radioactive elements present inside the underground granite, with the granite structure itself being at least 50 kilometers across. So this is a pretty large rock. And so the biggest challenge in this case was trying to explain how this could have formed. And here there are three potential explanations. So on the one hand, it could have been a result of a huge concentration of radiogenic material, or basically stuff like thorium and uranium, that produced more heat than usual. And in this case it might have resulted in remelting of material until it turned into granite. Here it would have to be exceptionally hot and potentially have some other conditions in order to produce these effects. Or maybe there was water here after all. Water underneath the surface that interacted with melting rock producing granite. Or something else similar to a hot plume on planet Earth that often produces volcanoes in very unusual locations. We still don't really understand exactly how this works on planet Earth either, but these large plumes located in the middle of continental plates and often not a result of plate tectonics do have a tendency to create very powerful volcanoes. For example, some of the largest volcanoes here in South Korea were actually produced this way. This actually resulted in one of the largest eruptions in the last 50,000 years. The eruption of Mount Baekdu in 946. And so maybe a similar event happened on the moon as well. But it's not entirely clear and is actually not going to be clear until someone goes there and investigates samples more directly. We've actually never visited this location and so at the moment it's not clear exactly what's happening right underneath this strange volcano. The volcano located in the middle of pretty much nothing, but the volcano as you can see from this map, that's one of many locations where there is a very large deposit of thorium and potentially some other radioactive rocks. Although honestly, at this point nobody actually knows what's going on inside. All of these are still just suggestions based on our current knowledge and current understanding of geology from planet Earth and for all we know this phenomenon is unique to the moon. Nevertheless, whatever is happening here is definitely intriguing. And more intriguing because if we ever do have a lunar colony or a lunar mission, this is a really cool location to potentially set up a base. It's quite likely that there are a lot of resources here and it's also quite likely to be a relatively safe location, a location that probably contains a lot of volcanic tubes and volcanic caves that can even be used as a future habitat. But also a lot of on-site resources, including probably water and of course thorium that can be used for energy. So definitely quite an intriguing place and quite a strange anomaly. With I guess the biggest question from all of this being in regards to liquid water. Was there actually water present here and is it still there even now? So that's kind of what the scientists are hoping to answer in the next few years. But until these future discoveries, for now this is still going to remain an anomaly and an unusually hot spot. An anomaly that we're going to discuss in some of the future videos once we learn something else. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, check out previous videos on a similar topic in the description below, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying a wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Either way, stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.